my first English talk in conference. And my topic is why do projects fail? And I share this topic is because um, since last year, I, com I completed my, I start to my, uh, finish my first uh, Pi Peak project. And the project name is called Sign on Pi. And so I want to share that because this project is not success and a lot of reason there. And so I want to share and to hope you like it and uh, that will help you to avoid uh, my mistakes. Uh, introduce myself first. Uh, I'm Kurt Zhou and uh, I am full stack web application engineer. And my Pi I'm a Pythonist, but my experience is uh, only three years, around three years. And here is my GitHub account and the uh, Stack Overflow account. Okay, uh, remember that my topic is why do projects fail? But uh, in here, I want you guys to think about one another things. Um, what do the community need? This topic category is in community. So I want you to think about this question at this moment. And I will answer you in the end of these slides. Uh, so let's talk about the story of Sinon Pi. And uh, you can see the documentation here is my project. So every project at the beginning need to have a motivation, a strong motivation to let their contributor try to contribute something on the open source community. So I'm not an exception. I also have a motivation here. So let's show my motivation here. Uh, you guys probably have ex experience in a uh, uh, Python library, which is called unit test and dot mark. Uh, can you tell me how many people in this room have that experience? Uh, can you raise your hand? <laughs> yeah, uh, not that much. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, unit test the mark is a library, it's a marking library for uh, Python unit testing. And it's more detailed unit testing. It can mark is using monkey patch to replace original function and maybe uh, you do some customized return value or maybe uh, raise some exception. So I show you here is, here is a official document. Official document, okay. Okay, the slide is a little bit messy. Um, it's an official document and uh, in this picture, it's just random code, random pieces of code from official document. But just from these three pieces of code, I got a lot of question here. The first is, um, in that library, they, it, it provides both magic mark and mark. The naming is just uh, unfriendly. I, I don't know what that mean. And the second thing is, uh, you, can, you can see that in the second piece of core and in the third piece of core. Here, there is a thing called side effect. And what is side effect means, I, I actually don't know, but you can see that they assign some exception into side effect, or they also assign another function to side effect. And then the very strange thing is at the, at the end of the, 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 third, the, third pieces of, the third piece of core, you can see at the end, there is like a mark dot side effect. What's that mean? It's really just unclear and just, uh, not not easy to use, especially for a lot of um, just newbie level Pythonists. They, they must feel really confused. So while I read the code last year, because I want to do some test-driven developments, uh, just to, I want to do some projects, and I found that my face is like this face. Just what? It's really tough to use. So. Here is PyCon, and uh, last year I have another experience is using a library in JavaScript called signon.js. Uh, can maybe uh, an another, another question is how many people know signon.js before? Can you raise your hand? Yeah, those people must be really experienced, probably uh, have experience in both uh, front end side and back end side. And Sign.js API is really good. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, it's my top um, 
marketing library I've seen uh, in my life. And also, um, last year when I searched, like uh, when if I want to do some monkey patch in JavaScript, what kind of language I can, what kind of library I should use? And Synon.js is the top library in JavaScript community. So here is the API. When I see this API, it's like this face. Yeah, it's really satisfied because it's really clear like how, what kind of category, uh, what kind of things I want is there. And if you see like uh, the API here, it's like uh, I want to spy something and uh, uh, how many call counts of that spy target. It's quite clear to use. So basically, when I think about this, then here's my conclusion at that time. I just feel like, you see, Unit test the mark the Python official library. Um, yeah, a Python official library, which is already in uh, building Python, uh, probably after three point three Python three point three, and the interface is quite ugly and it's quite hard to use. And the document is hard to understand and unfriendly, and especially for beginner, it's really hard to use. And how about Synon.js? Comparing with Unit test the mark. JavaScript sign on this is relatively easy, clear to understand, and nice interface. So what else I can do? I think this thing at that moment. And then I just think like uh, maybe I can make some fusion. I can do a thing called Python sign on .py. Is that possible? For sure it's possible. So at this moment, I want to share my work. So let's take a look at my work. Uh, since uh, I want to remember more time on maybe Q&A, so I already write some code there. But in here, um, OK, sorry. OK, uh, is that clear? OK, so my work is like a, Basically, it's a monkey patch library. So I can just share some very simple example. I first uh, just in include my, import my sign on. And then if my target is a, just a really simple library called OS, and what will, what will happen? Just like uh, uh, generally, you will call your, 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 li your, your function, your unit, if, if you want to do some project, your function may have called OS dot whatever. And so like a OS dot system and maybe LS, whatever. And here it shows some results and return value at the end, end of line. And so sign on library, what sign library do is like uh, I can declare one spy, spy function. And then I just try to no, I think it's not a good name. Maybe OS this turn and spy. And I think that's the easiest thing here is like uh, I just call sign on the spy. And then what kind of things I want to inspect is OS. And function is system. So like this, I just spy OS system. So what will happen next is if I type this again. And then, OK, the name is. A little bit typo, okay. Anyway, uh, I can just show like a call count. It's one, and if I if I do this second time, and the call count is is two, yeah. So basically, the library marking library is like a, I can inspect the function and not in, influence the original function's uh, content. That's the first example, and let me show another example. Okay, so in here, the second thing I want to do is uh, just uh, declare another thing called stop. Um, so like this, I use another thing called sign on that stop. And what will happen now is if I call always system again, what will happen? Nothing will happen because I already replaced the original function, patching that into a just a nothing. And uh, I also can, I still can use a thing called um, call count. Yeah. 
yeah, still one there. So this is uh, my work, and uh, actually the interface is signon.js. It's same interface in uh, signon.js version 1.9. And right now the version is 2.3, but I have not researched that yet. So let's go back to my slide. Um, and here I want to share my experience. So how did I do on this project? Beginning is a schedule. But while you see a schedule, it's quite funny. Actually, I spent one month on researching. Why? Why one month on researching? You know, it's, isn't that hard things actually for, um, in, for audience which have experience, Python experience, then you may feel like uh, this is not a hard thing. Actually, pieces of code, you can finish that. But the problem is, before I did this project, I'm really weak. What kind of question I ask is here. Uh, I can show you directly in Stellarflow website. And you can see that here's the question I make. I say that the how to force assign a value to a function call. And the problem is at that moment, I only know a function called get attributes. I even don't know how to assign value to that. So in here, you can see this really silly part. It's like a get attribute always the system, and can I assign that thing some special value and replace that? And probably who, who, who know this answers question can, can who, who know this question's answer? Can you raise your hand? Anyone know that? No one? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't believe it. Okay. The question is, it's fucking stupid. Okay. <laughs> it's just like a set attribute. It's just set attributes. It's nothing. Like uh, if you read some really basic Python book, they will teach you maybe in really, really early, early chapter. It's quite easy things. So, you know, the problem is like uh, I asked this question seven months ago. So seven months ago, I'm really weak. Like I, I will ask this kind, of, this kind of simple question at that moment. So let's go back. Um, as you see a schedule, I spend one month on prototyping and one month on research. So here's the, here, here's all the thing I use in my project. Uh, like uh, in Python core, I learned that uh, really simple attribute things and reload or uh, weak, weak reference is a, for me it's a new thing, even it's not really new actually. And uh, like a Python OOP or RD is just maybe really easy thing and also Yesterday I have a talk about the character. So those things are not really new and not special, but I learned those things at that moment. And also, uh, as I say, it's my first uh, PyP project. So I learned a lot of skills on building a PyP project, like uh, how to contribute a new PyP project and uh, how about continuous integration and uh, how about the coverage and uh, how, to, uh, how to achieve really high coverage in that project. And also how to making, how to make a really complete documentation. And another thing is PyLint is a coding style things like how to make your projects code quality high. I research those things and I implement those things in my project. So, you know, everything seems very good, right? Seems very good, but or no reaction. <laughs> okay, is that bad? Okay, anyway, how about the feedback from others? You see a very, just uh, everyone know this picture is like uh, when you build a pop, um, slide in Microsoft PowerPoint, you will see this like uh, you need to add something there, but the result is like nothing. Yeah, actually it's nothing. No one. Actually, there is something. Like uh, I use Google Analytics in my project, and you can see like only few people read my documentation. And the important thing is, 
like the state time, 0 0.01 second, which means that they, they just click like, oh, it's the wrong website, so they just close that. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Actually, even today, I checked that website is just, to, I, I guess, maybe eight people read my documentation. And the other thing is I also posted these results on Reddit, you know, Reddit forum. Reddit uh, is a thread of Python results. Four points and uh, 74 up, up, up votes, which means there's some people just uh, don't care about this or disagree with this. So why do this project fail? Okay, actually I got a uh, few, I, I think that for a few, few weeks and I finally got these results. First thing is I didn't discuss with anyone when I do this project. Actually I have, I had, but the, the people I discussed is all of them is not Pythonists. They just maybe they are C programmer, they are whatever, they just not, uh, they are not interested in Python. And so they don't, they don't understand Python, they think, okay, JavaScript, okay, that thing is a good idea and the API is good, so why not? And the second thing is like, uh, I didn't read X6 project. You know, when I go to Reddit website, I posted my project there. The people at there ask me first question is, so what's the difference between your project the implement implementation between your project and the unit test on Mac. And actually at that moment, I, start to, I started to check unit test on Mac source score. And I found that the Im implementation is same, almost same. We use same idea on everything. And actually my core is even heavy because I, I adapt some object-oriented design. And the second thing is, yeah, here, like, uh, the motivation is quite stupid. I just want to make some beautiful API. If you just want to do that, then why not adapt unit test and mark as a backend and uh, just implement some API based on that? Why, why you want to implement the older thing by yourself again? And also, the other thing I show you is like several months ago, I asked a really stupid question on state overflow. It's like a, I only have poor skills, but I'm there try to make some library and I, I, I'm, I don't know why, I didn't know why I'm really confident at that moment. So let's go back to think about the question I asked first in this talk. What do the community need? I'm not sure how many people know this guy. It's David, Have, I, 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 don't, I don't know, I, I didn't know he, he had come here or not, uh, come here before or not. Um, he gave a talk about Async IO's API in 2015 in Brazil, PyCom. And he gave the Py Python audience a really, um, really impressive idea for me. He said that actually Async IO in Python is a good idea, but they don't need to provide API because Async IO's API in that talk is not efficiency. It's just a really inefficient library, uh, API. So actually you can imp implement it, that thing by yourself. You don't need to use that API. So that API is um, unnecessary things in his opinion. And so go back to think about my projects, it's same thing, like uh, what do the community need? Uh, this community is related to Python's community while you do any project. Before implementing your idea, you should think about two things. It's first, reading X6 projects. Like uh, Async IO, the talk that he, David said, they already have a, a really good library called G-Event. So actually you can implement it all Async IO's things in G-Event. And for me, same case, I actually can use unit test on mark. I don't need to implement it that by myself. And second thing is that uh, please discussing with more experienced Pythonists. Here is a lot of people have a lot of experience. So we, we have no need to 
uh, just uh, implement it led by ourselves and uh, don't ask anyone. And just when I, when you finish that, you find like, okay, it's a, it's a bad thing, bad idea. So the principle I got here is, first thing everyone know in software engineering, everyone know this, don't reinvent the wheel. Like what I do is I reinvent the wheel. There is a unit test on mark, actually it's not necessary. And second thing is in Python community, I got this principle, maybe it's not Maybe it's not correct, or maybe it's just my subjective opinion. But in Python community, I got this idea is, if there is a car, you just learn how to drive that car. You don't need to implement the same car and try to say, my car is better. This idea is uh, in Python community because uh, I'm, also, uh, I'm also really interested in JavaScript, and I found that JavaScript community is totally different. In that community, it's like, a, if there is some exact things and some, some, some company will say, let's just implement another one, and that might be better. And so that's why uh, in previous few years, uh, you can see that there's a lot of JavaScript framework. But in Python community, actually they're just like Flask, Django, and okay, maybe others, but in recent years, it's just those things. But uh, for sure, there is some exception. Um, for, for guys who want to reinvent the wheel and maybe with, with, without experience, not that much experience in Python, I think that's fine. But you should remember one thing is, um, I guess, in my opinion, I think nobody will believe you and your work will not be that convinced. So the best idea might not be uh, reinvent that thing. The best idea is try to read others' code and to try to contribute to their library, not implement your own library. And the second thing is like uh, if there is a car and if you really want to make another new car, it's possible. For sure it's possible. But you just think another thing is, um, if you have a really strong team, or maybe your company support that, they have a lot of people try to um, maybe help you and a lot of experienced Pythonists, then that's possible. So yeah, as I say, my category is community. So in the end of my talk, here is my conclusion is like, uh, don't be afraid of joining the communities. That's why I'm here. I'm actually this year's uh, PyCon staff, and I'm also a speaker. So actually they will help, help you to grow up properly. And like my experience is like, I just do the things, before I join the community, I do the things by myself. I think maybe that's correct, maybe that's possible, but I didn't think about uh, maybe the community don't need that. So if other people can help you of, about that, then that will be better. So that's my talk, then I remain six minutes for Q&A. Yes. Uh, hi, I have one question. What makes you think that your project failed? Okay, um, the problem I found is um, when I posted that to Reddit, I found two things is, uh, first, the community already have sent implementation there. So if you reinvent that things, then in Python community, it won't work. Because if I, you know, I am a, you can see, I, I, I might not re be really good in stable flow, but at least I have uh, 1,000, yeah, here is a thing, it's called, I, I'm top 20% I'm top Pythonist there. So I actually answered a lot of people question, a lot of people's question there. And to be honest, if someone asks about Mark, Python Mark, or some Mark, Mark, marking page things in Python, I will try to use official, maybe PyTest is another famous Python framework, or maybe unitest.mark. I won't answer them sign on.py. Why? 
because that's not famous and nobody cares that. So I can't answer that them in, in that project. So yeah, that's my second reason why I think this project is failed because the the beginning point is wrong. If I implemented that based on um, based on original maybe unit test dot mark, then that may be possible because I'm just an API. I just implemented API. The back end is not implemented by me. Then that will be better. And so that, that's so that's why I think my project failed. Hey. Hey. Um do, be, in the advice you give is to read the um, uh, implementation and also to talk with other Pythonists. Yeah. Uh, do you think you were able to do this uh, seven months ago when you write your 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 um, your question on on Stack Overflow and you at this time maybe you you are not able to read implementation of of big library like uh, like by the, for the test library by yourself at this time. Yeah, as I say, um, my motivation is because when I read the unit test that mark documentation, I feel really, I feel suck. You know, that official documentation is horrible. Just uh, not not really easy to read, and you spend so much time, but the library is so bad. And when I did my another project in JavaScript, I found that API is brilliant. So my opinion at that moment is just really, really direct, just implementing a new one. And but after I implementing that, I found that I make a lot of wrong things, just I say in this talk. So that's why, yeah, for sure, if seven months ago, I have this mindset, if someone in in community sharing, sharing these things for others, then maybe I won't make these mistakes. So yeah, so that's why I'm here. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this answer is, um, is good, is, it's okay for you, <laughs> okay. Hey. Uh, I, I want to know when will you think your project will succeed? Okay. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, it's quite easy to know that. Actually, if you met some projects and post that on GitHub and also some other community, maybe uh, Reddit or maybe you have some your own community, then if some people join, try to discuss that things and even some people uh, make some poor requests or make some issues on your project and try to discuss with you, and they gather some some people interested in your work, then which means your project uh, at least is attractive to others, rather than nobody care about that. Yeah. Uh, but because uh, uh, several years ago, I, I can I, I make a new project and just like you, and I think Python cache is sucks, and so I, I build a new one, and uh, only one people, one person, yeah. Uh, send an issue for me and discuss for around two or three days, and no more. Uh, <laughs> no more. Okay, so did yeah, you so think I, that I don't, I don't think is it, I, I think it's fail, but I don't yeah. know uh, what is succeed. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, is it around hundred stars or how many people discuss or? Yeah. Uh, I I don't think stars is important, but I think people try to if your project can attract people and keep attracting new people, then it is it's success. And as I say. If your project even like a, if you if someone answered your question on Stableflow and adapt your 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 solution, then which just means is popular enough or is solid enough for them. Okay, the first. Uh, you mentioned one of your uh, one of the reason you fa your fail is uh, you haven't searching for related libraries. So have you found the better one than unitest.mark? Okay. Uh, actually, I have read uh, uh, a lot of discussion late after I finished this. And uh, I, I think some people uh, talk about uh, PyTest and uh, DuckTest and um, unitest.mark. And the thing is, uh, I, I, the answer I got is unitest.mark is not the best solution because it's official 
it's already building official library. So which means every change will be followed by uh, Python's version. So that might not be the best choice because uh, if there's some, it's not flexible because Python release is have some duration, duration, so it's not flexible. And so they suggest that like, PyTest is a relatively best solution there. And I personally agree with that. And also I've seen a lot of my really, around me, as I said, when I joined your community, I found that like, a lot of really experienced Pythonists, they, they, they adapt um, PyTest for their, uh, especially um, marking part and also test framework. Uh, thank you. Oh, last oh, one. <laughs> okay. No, can I speak in Chinese? Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Because I really like this conversation about Python in Taiwan. So, I'll give a little bit of keynote. Uh,他人很好,那大家台湾讲的东西也很有趣这样子。对我不认为我失败了这样<笑> 你聽過Python的Web Framework比Key它的關鍵字還多的話,你就知道為什麼。在選Web <笑> Framework的時候,對,有點那個好。那今天就是謝謝你的演講。Oh, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Yeah. So, thanks Carl.